One of the plugins that's very useful in mixing and mastering is a peak limiter. And until now in GarageBand, we haven't had one. But now with the latest iOS 13 update, that has all changed. We now have a peak limiter available here in GarageBand. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use it. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live today where my goal is to help you create, record and release your best music. So if that sounds like your kind of thing, consider subscribing. We are back here in GarageBand today and I want to talk about the peak limiter and where you would actually use this. It's very cool because now we have this AU peak limiter and in the past, if we came in here and we dialed in settings, when we closed and reopened our project, we would lose those settings. That has been fixed. So if you're on iOS 13 and you're running the latest version of GarageBand, it is now going to work perfectly and this is really handy for us because it means we can use a limiter on individual tracks as well as on our entire master and it's a really handy thing to have so let's dive in and talk about it in more detail so what is a limiter and why would you use one? Well, first of all, we need to understand compression because limiting is just a type of compression. So if you've used a compressor before in GarageBand or in any other platform, what you do is you dial in the threshold, which is when the compressor will kick in. You then decide the ratio of how much compression is being applied. The attack is how quickly that compression will kick in. And then you use some makeup gain to actually dial that in and bring the volume up because what a compressor is doing is it's actually reducing reducing the peak volumes and then it's pulling the rest of the mix up. The reason for that is instead of having really loud and really quiet parts, it's pushing the loud parts down and then bringing everything back up. Very simple explanation of compression, but hopefully that helps you understand the basics. What a limiter does is very similar, except it's often called a brick wall limiter because instead of compressing and then going up into the red, what it does is it peaks, it hits the limit, which is at usually zero dB or just under zero dB, just under peaking, and then you can actually bring your mix up. So it's great for mastering a song because if your song is too quiet, you can actually limit it. So you can bring the overall volume up and it can be more competitive with other tracks that you may be playing it with. So let's take a look. It's a very simple peak limiter that we have here in GarageBand. Let's take a look at how it works. So here I have one of my songs. This is a project that I created in GarageBand a couple of years ago. And as you can see here, it's all on one track. This is the exported version. I've exported the WAV file and I've brought it in. If you want to learn how to export and import WAV files in GarageBand, check the video up the top there and in the description. But if we hit play on this one at the moment, it sounds like this. So it's sounding pretty good, yeah. So I would be pretty happy with this, but what if I wanted to master this song and I wanted to make sure that its volume was right up there and competitive? Uh, and you can see here, it increases as we go along here and it gets a bit louder there. So what I would want to do is actually add a limiter. So here, what I've done, in fact, we'll go to edit and we'll just remove that so I can show you the full process is what we would do is we would come into our mixer up here in the top left. We would go to plugins and EQ. We would tap or click on the edit icon there and then your limiter, usually you want it to be the last thing. So I'm going to tap on the plus button down here and then I'm going to tap on audio unit extensions, scroll to the bottom until we find the AU peak limiter and that's added in there. What I also tend to do is tap edit at this time and then drag that down to the bottom here because you always want your limiter to be the last thing in your chain. And when I say always, yeah, you can experiment with other things, but generally the best practice is to have your limiter at the bottom of your plugin chain. So we'll tap on done on that one. What we can now do is if we tap on this limiter, we can actually set up the attack time, the release time, and the pre-game. So as I mentioned, it's a very simple limiter that we have here. So the attack by default is 0.002 seconds, so a very quick attack. The release is 0.005 seconds. So you can adjust that in milliseconds or decimals of a second. The attack can be right up to 0.03 or it can be down at 0.001, the release time can go up to 0.04. So again, we don't have a heap of control over those, but you generally want a pretty quick attack and a pretty quick release with this sort of thing. Um, and, and that's what we have here in GarageBand anyway. You can, of course, buy other limiters. So GarageBand limiter is not the only one, but it is a free one. So if you want something for free, then you can experiment with this one. So we'll dial in about around about that default sort of three and eight there. And then what we can do is we can start dialing up this pre-gain and what this does that's different to a volume control is again it won't ever hit the top so if you watch our volume meter up here as I dial this up you'll see what's actually happening here so we'll hit play 
and I'll dial in. We'll start at zero. By the way, you can double tap to go back to zero. We'll start at zero and we'll play it and I'll dial this up. Feet try to sleep on the plane today. Check my bag. Have I packed what I will need? I'll see because that's my preference. It keeps me separate. So what I hope you heard there is that that didn't sound good. As soon as I got over about five or six dB there, it started doing what we call pumping. So the reason it's pumping is that it's it's trying to increase the volume, but every time it gets up there, it's sort of kicking in and out. So every time there's a louder part, it's going to create that pumping effect. So that, unless that's what you want, that's generally what you don't want. You can, of course, use that on an individual track as an interesting technique, like over limiting or just sort of crunching it like that, super heavy compression can actually work if you want that boom, boom, boom kind of sound. I don't tend to want that. So what I'm going to show you now is that what we probably want to do, so I'm going to hit done on that one now. So you can actually dial in and if your, if your original mix is too loud, something that I would recommend is to dial down the original mix and then bring in your limiter because what you're finding, especially in GarageBand with auto normalization means it pushes the volume up pretty heavily and sometimes you'll actually need to drop the volume down so you can bring it back up again. The difference being instead of it being like that, like a bit of a peaky look, then it's actually going to bring it down and then bring everything up and it's going to level out and flatten that out. You don't want to do too much, but if you do a little bit, it can sound and sound pretty good. So we'll tap on here. We'll come back in. Now let's hit play again and I'll dial up this pregame. From the people carrying way too much in the overhead, safety demonstration, hoping once again it won't be needed. It's a class structure. So there you go, you can see that it's sort of bringing it up to that level and it's, uh, yeah, it's got that sound flattened out there. So that is what we can do here with a limiter, a peak limiter in GarageBand. As I said, it's a very simple limiter. You can look for other ones, but it's very cool that it's free and available here in GarageBand. There's two more videos, links down below that you can check out. If you want to find out about more free plugins in GarageBand, you can subscribe to the channel by clicking or tapping on the Studio Live Today icon and I'll see you next time.